So what we're going to do is I'm going to give two different subjects. One is on what is the church supposed to look like, and then two, the value of women. It just is something I've been thinking about for a little while and how our culture is just attacking women. We talk about men a lot, uh, how we need their father influence and the fatherlessness in our society. If you've been here coming any length of time, you know we talk about that a lot, enough to probably get on your nerves. And uh, um, so to, I'm never a big PowerPoint person or a presentator because as soon as I start talking, I may have three points up there, and then I decide not to do the second point and just skip it and go to the third, and, and people go, and it just throws people off because you're not following the thing. I guess I'm too much of a prophetic-type flow person. And so today is teaching, though. Two weeks ago when we were here, I had a, a message on prophetically by the Holy Spirit. I felt where we were at at a church. But today's just going to be teaching. And so let's talk about the church a little bit. And so um, uh, oh, so hold on. So I'm going to just talk, so you're going to have to see my hand scratching, but this is better. You don't have to quite remember it quite as well. And do a refresh on that page. Let's see if we can get it going here. Yeah, all right, good. And so um, it should work for now. Um, uh, Acts 2.42. And so let me talk about this a little bit, just sort of add a little. Next Sunday we are going to have... Uh, not a normal church service, still going to meet at 10, but we're going, I guess it disappeared, Mike. You might have to leave the arrow on that thing. All right, so um, we're going uh, to have breakfast here at 10. You know, we often have potluck dinners, covered dishes. It's that type of thing, but it's for breakfast. And so you can bring donuts, sweets, breakfast casserole, whatever you want, enough for your family or or yourself and maybe a little bit more. And we're just, I don't know, an hour, an hour and a half, just going to enjoy each other and have fellowship in here. And that's where it ties into Acts 2.42, and we'll come back to it. After that, we're going to have like a QA and a panel. I'm going to ask three or four people. Uh, I may change before then, so I'm not going to give details because you go, last Sunday you said this. And so uh, sometimes my ideas get better as the weeks go on, as the week goes on. So it's better just to wait. But we're just going to have a q and I won't be speaking, and I'll probably be facilitating. No worship. And it'll just be, a, just to be a fun time to get to know each other. But the reason we're doing that is, let me back up. Have you ever heard people say, well, our style of church, our form of church is the style of church, is the form of church? Maybe you've never heard that. I'm big into churches, been doing it all of my life. Well, let me tell you, the Bible gives no definition except for two verses on the style or form of a church. One's Acts 20.20. 20. It says they met in the synagogue and from house to house. So that's a form. That's why for years we've had Sunday morning in small groups. For a transition that we're in now, we're, we're not doing very many small groups. We have some. Uh, we're trying to pray through that to see what the Lord is means. In, in the epistles, it talks about a government of churches. That's not a form. Three, three passages, one's on uh, the gifts Jesus gives to the church, often called the fivefold, apostle, prophet, pastor, evangelist, teacher, and then elders and deacons and Timothy. And so, but, so the form of church is only meet from house to house and in the synagogue. They didn't have their own buildings. Eventually, they got kicked out of the synagogues. And this Acts 2.42, you can um, look it up on your Bible. It's hard to show it up here at the same time that we're talking. But let me just read it. It says this, they were devoted to four things. The disciples, this is the middle of Acts. If you're not familiar with the Bible, Acts is the first book after Jesus rose from the dead. It's the Acts of the church. That's where that word came from, the actions of the church. And you can learn a lot about the church as you read those verses. They, they started many churches in many different places. They all look different. One church shouldn't look like another. That's where the leadership and the people need to press in and go, Jesus, you're the head. What do you want this church to look like? But it says they were committed to four things. The disciples were devoted to the teachings of the, teachings of the apostles, to fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. And so we've got four things here that they did. One was teaching. 
So we know the church should have at least these four things. One was prayer. One was fellowship. And one was breaking of bread. Let's just a minute talk about this and um, where we're at on this. And so each church has to sort of try to fit in and figure it out. So what does the apostles' teaching mean? You have to understand the context. Teaching is the important part. At this stage of the church, there was only the apostles. They had not started figuring out the fivefold offices of Ephesians 4, 11, and 12. Jesus gave some gifts to the church for prophets, apostles, pastors, evangelists, and teachers for the maturing of the church. They, this was a brand new concept. Prophet and teacher were the only offices in the Old Testament, and they were redefined in the New Testament. The other ones, evangelist, apostle, and pastor, were brand new. Apostle was a Greek word for a Roman government office. So they were trying to figure all this out, and they hadn't even understood all of the offices yet. So it was teaching by the apostles. The important part is teaching, and that's what we're doing here. The fellowship... It's amazing when you look through Acts, just go read it, how much time they spent hanging out with one another. That's something we've missed in the American church. That's one reason we did small groups so much for a little while. In the last couple of years, the Lord's, I'm not exactly sure where He's leading it. We're not giving up on small groups, but He's doing something different with COVID and everything else. But the, um, it is full of fellowship. And this is something I want relationship, church, to get even better at. And that's one reason we're not doing a traditional, that is the reason we're not doing a traditional church service next week. Since we don't have as many small groups, we've had several this year, big hangouts at, at, at my property. We've got big property, uh, cookouts on a Friday night. We've had good crowds. It's been fun, done cornholes, played basketball, pool, those kind of things. You know, that is God. He, lo- he is a relational God, and He loves hanging out with His people. And Americans, to some degree, have lost, especially in the church, have lost this part about hanging out. Let's just all assemble at the church for teaching and information. See, this is one way. It's not two-way. There is value in two ways. There is value in getting to know one another uh, I learn from you. You learn from me. I want to tell you, I love hanging out with people at Relationship Church. It's fun. I am not on a pedestal. I think if you've been around long enough, most of you have my Facebook Messenger, my personal phone, text message, my emails. You know, I I work during the day, so I may not reply instantly, but I love hanging out with you guys. And and you've noticed Jesus' model of mentoring was hanging out with 12 guys for three years, plus a whole bunch of other people, his mom, Mary, Elizabeth, and it says up to 70 people. You learn more by hanging out with people. There's also the whole dynamic of iron sharpens iron. Well, what does that mean? That's a Proverbs verse. A friend is like iron sharpens iron. So, if, if, you're, if you're a rock with a lot of sharp edges, getting paper to try to get off those edges doesn't work. If you want to get a smooth rock, you've got to get another rock, or even better, an iron filing that starts filing it off. How many of you have learned to grow up to some degree around your best friend, your spouse, a uh, 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 family, because they just rub you the wrong way, and then when you get over being mad, you go, you know... Maybe there's something to it. And you sort of file off a little roughness. And that happens enough if we walk in humility and um, you start becoming a pretty smooth stone over time. See, this way I'm not rough. I may ruffle your feathers by something I say, but I may never know it. But if I'm in a relationship with you, I can go, oh, yeah, that, I just stepped on your toes. I, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to do it on purpose. Maybe you did, and maybe you need to confess it as sin. But that's a whole other story. And so um, uh, so we're on a path. Okay, especially as a small church, it's easy. If there's a 1,000 people in here, I don't know how we'd do it. So I like this size, you know, or a couple hundred or less. But I, So if you have any ideas on how to 
we, we, we're, we're chasing after three things. Intimacy, community, and maturity in relationships. Intimacy with God, a, a vertical relationship. Uh, a community, horizontal relationship with you. We want to get better. We're, we're not bad, but we're not anywhere near like I would like us to be. Now, you can't be best friends even with the 35, 40 people that's in here. It's too many. But we can be acquaintances and even a little better with the 35 to 40 people, and maybe five or six of those were close. It's sort of like three rings of circles, you know what I'm talking about. Even Jesus had his three rings of circles. He had his 12, then he had three that he talked about a lot, uh, Peter, James, and John, and then he had one guy that was called the Beloved, which was John. It would have been cool to be John, to be called the Beloved, and he put his head on Jesus' chest. Growing up in the South, I don't put my head on any guy's chest, okay? But uh, that was a whole different culture back then. They could do that. Now, if Jesus came in, yeah, I'm all game. But you get my point. That's how close they were. It's a whole different culture. First time, well, it wasn't the first time I went overseas, but the first time I met a Southern European uh, from Italy, that we were in Bulgaria, and he was from Italy. And, and if you've ever met people from Spain, Southern Italy, this guy was a pastor. He comes up. He did the Italy thing. He come up. And he greets me. I never met this guy before. And he kisses me on both cheeks because that's their custom. As a southern white guy, that's just not what you do. How many of you can identify if you're from the south? So, you know, I was cool enough. I didn't say anything great. And then I realized there was in that slight pause, you know what's coming. I had to do it back to him. (laughs) That's when I had to die to myself. And so we got through that. And if I saw any more people from Italy, I just ran and away from the distance. Hopefully I've grown and got a little bit more mature now. But that's how John was. He had the, the three rings, John and Peter, James, and John. And it's okay. There's going to be three rings here. But we want everybody to be close to somebody, especially you men. Women are a little bit better at it. Men statistically and practically learning. As you get older, you, you stop men relationships. But anyway, so that's just something we got to work at. And so if you have any ideas on community, big or small, we'll, we'll, we'll try to figure this thing out together. Because we, are, we, we do want teaching. We want fellowship. Prayer is obvious. Now, this breaking of bread, I've done lots of reading the last several weeks on this. So I wasn't even planning on teaching on this. It just came up. Read lots of commentaries on this. And it's all over the map of what this means. I'm going to give you my interpretation. Not that it's any better than any of the other people. It may even be wrong. But I'm telling you, there's not a common consensus on this. So you got teaching, fellowship, and prayer, and breaking of bread. I think it's as simple as this. They ate together. That was the way the culture talked about meals. You can, you can have fellowship... Like you go and play golf together or disc golf or basketball or knitting or whatever, shopping. That's fellowship. But you may not eat together. There's something in the Middle Eastern culture. I've been to the Middle East. Uh, I take that back. I've not been to the Middle East. I've been to the, well, Turkey is right on the, the border there. But they have a Middle Eastern culture in Constantinople. There... The tables were on the ground with no chairs if it was a true Middle Eastern restaurant. This is the way it was in Jesus' day. When he had the Last Supper, they did not sit in chairs around tables. They sat in a reclining position on the floor. Now, me, with my knees being older, that does not sound appealing at all. But that was their culture. Why? They were not in a hurry to get through the meal. They would eat. They would take their time. It was several, when they had these kind of meals, it was a several hour deal of fellowship, talking, hanging out. You can't do this in American restaurants. It's very hard. Unless you're at a fast food place where they don't, if they have tips, you can't do it. Why? Because they're trying to move that table because the waiters and waitresses get paid by tips. I love France. I've been to France several times. There is no tipping allowed. They pay them a living wage. When you get a table, it's for the whole evening. You can do it there. 
So this is more, at, if you go to McDonald's or someplace like that, or your house where you're eating together, there's something in the process of eating. That's why we're eating next week. Not a big meal. But uh, just the fellowship of talking that increases the intimacy. Have you, any of you ever noticed that? Now, some people say this breaking of bread in, 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 in commentaries is communion, the act of communion. I don't see it here. It just doesn't say that. But if it is communion, let me, let me clarify it a little bit. The way we do communion is not what Jesus modeled. He was at a table with no legs eating a supper, the last supper. And he said, when you're doing this, what I just described, eating, intimacy, fellowship. Remember, he's the head, we're the body. I'm giving you heavy teaching, but hang on. Now you're the student today, right? You you get to teach tomorrow. (laughs) She's a kindergartner teacher in Blairsville. And so, remember, we're the body. You and I. You know that passage, some are a hand, some are a foot, some are whatever. And you're going, yeah, some of them I want to slap. But yeah, that's, that's the iron sharpens iron part. And he put, have you noticed he'll put you beside people? You go, why do I get all these people to irritate me? He's doing it on purpose. He's smoothing you out. And the quicker you get smoothed, the quicker they'll stop irritating you. And they may move on. Or you may just end up loving them. But he's around this table at the Last Supper. And when they do the communion, and the act of communion, I mean, we do that here. There's nothing wrong with it. But you have to see the bigger picture. They, he already took the bread they had been eating. He had already took the wine they had been drinking. And he made like he was so good at it all through the Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, when he was teaching, he always did parables for the most part, except for the Sermon on the Mount. There's always stories. Somebody had a coin and then they lost it. Somebody gave one talent to one person, three to five. He took what he had as an example and he said, in a short amount of time, like tomorrow, if you read on, my body's going to be broken like we're taking breaking this bread. My blood's going to be shed like... Uh, we've been drinking this wine. It was a visual aid. That's cool, isn't it? And so what he was doing when he said, do, when you ever, in 1 Corinthians, whenever you do this, do this in remembrance of me, whenever you get together and eat and you're the body and you're fellowshipping and you're intimate and you're growing closer together, remember, you can do this because my bread, my body was broken. And my blood was shed. And you're my body and I'm the head and I'm right here with you. And so what we do here is fine. I don't have a problem with it. But the bigger picture is even more beautiful, isn't it? We're living out His body as we hang out at a table. Now next week, the chairs will be here. We're not going to gather around the floor. One reason the table is you can't take the legs off second is I'm not into that custom, amen. I I love the the European custom, but it's all good. All right, let's change subjects. Any questions on that before we move on? We're in a casual church and comments. You're asking probably the wrong person. That was my whole revelation right there. I just told on it, but thank you. (laughs) Any other... uh, comments or questions, but I appreciate the encouragement. It's a cool picture, though, isn't it? And so, you know, we don't do it real often here. When we do it, it's cool. But next time you got some people from the church, Christians, family over, just stop at the end with your crescent roll and your Diet Coke. Say, let's remember Jesus and just pause. Because it's the principle, it's the parable that's being gone there. You're not supposed to drink Diet Coke. Whatever it is. But it's good.